This video is about how to use the smoke curtain. We're going to look at a number of different doors that you can fit the curtain in. Inward opening doors, outward opening doors, self-closing and double doors. And we're going to look at a number of different ways that you can fit the curtain or curtains within those doors. A standard fitting, using a double curtain, sealing a door off completely and using the curtain to improve PPV. To start with, we're going to look at the most common use of the curtain, which is a standard fitting in an inward opening door. Fitting the curtain like this takes less than 15 seconds from the curtain coming out of the bag to it being locked in place in the doorway. If we slow down what just happened, the process is that the top right hand corner of the curtain gets fitted into the top right hand corner of the door frame. The frame is then slid out to the left until it hits the left hand side of the door frame. Tighten the spreader bar in the direction of the red arrow until the curtain is secure. Then push the locking button. The purpose of this button is to lock the ratchet release mechanism in case someone bumps it when they're coming through the curtain. The sequence for removing the curtain is slightly different to the sequence for fitting it. The first thing to do is to unscrew the spreader bar all the way until it stops in the direction of the green arrow. Then push the locking button to release it. Push the ratchet release lever and slide the frame all the way to the left. Fold the curtain over the frame and then fold the curtain over itself three times and it's ready to put back in the bag. We're going to look now at our second type of door which is an outward opening door. What I mean by outward opening is that as we're making our way through the building from the outside towards the fire, that door is going to open towards us. And what that means is that we have to open the door first and then fit the curtain. Now that obviously exposes us to risk. You're exposed to any smoke, heat, flame, flashover, backdraft, anything that happens in that compartment. So in this situation, it's really important you're not only wearing your full firefighting PPE, but that you're also wearing breathing apparatus and you've got firefighting media with you. Other than that, the process is exactly the same. Open the door first and then fit the curtain in exactly the same way that you would fit it in an inward opening door. There are a number of different types of self-closing mechanisms. Some of them will give you a problem with the curtain and some of them won't. This door, for example, allows the curtain to be fitted without any problem at all. This type of self-closer does create a problem for the curtain because it can't be placed all the way up to the top of the door frame. It leaves a gap which will let smoke come through. You have two options here. You either remove that arm from the self-closer or you just accept the fact that there's a gap. The gap will allow some smoke through but you've probably reduced more than 90% of the smoke that's coming through. In reality, it's probably easier to accept the gap than to start getting some tools and removing that closer. While you're removing the closer, the door is going to be open. It's likely you're going to let more smoke through than if you just accept the gap, put the curtain up, go and extinguish the fire. There are two types of double doors. They'll either have a locking mechanism or they won't. If it has a locking mechanism, then we can use it with a curtain. If it doesn't have a locking mechanism, then we can't. So locking mechanism could be one like this, or it could be one that's flush within the door itself. If you can lock one of the doors, then you can open the other door, fit the curtain in that door, and it'll be solid, and it works in exactly the same way as a standard door. If the double doors don't have bolts, then you can't fit the curtain in those doors, because it just won't be secure. What you can do, if you really need to reduce the smoke that's coming out of there, reduce the air that's getting to the fire, is you can actually use a reciprocating saw and saw off the bottom corner of one or both of those doors. That way you can make a gap that the hose can travel through, the door can still be shut, and it's gonna keep most of the smoke on one side of it and stop the air getting to the fire as well. If you want an extra level of protection from the curtain, you can fit two curtains in the same doorway. That provides extra weight, which means that if there's wind on, let's say, the face of the building where you're fitting the curtain, and you don't want that getting into the fire, 
or if it's a wind-driven fire that's coming towards you, you might want to seal that off so that you've got a, a greater level of protection there. This system still allows access and egress into the compartment, but obviously you need to be thinking about why you'd be accessing the compartment if uh, you need that level of protection. You've also got to be very careful about not fitting this while there's someone in the compartment because they're not going to be expecting that necessarily if they've gone through a single cu curtain to come across a double curtain when they're, they're leaving. Communication is going to be key. If you want to create a complete seal around a door, then you can use two curtains again, and this time you're going to slide one down all the way to the bottom of the frame, and when you clamp it in place, make sure you've clamped both sides of the top curtain against the door frame. The advantage of this is that if, let's say, there's a missing door and you know, you're not going to be making access through there, you can, you can put a, an artificial door in there, which is going to be very robust. It may be that you want to seal off an area while you're carrying out a, a different tactic like evacuation. Um, that's going to give you a really tight door seal. The disadvantage is that you've lost access and egress. You will have a gap that's just about big enough to fit a branch through or maybe a fog nail, uh, but that's the only thing that's going to be going through that door. The last technique we're going to look at is increasing the effectiveness of your PPV. Uh, very simply, all you're going to do is fit the curtain as normal and then fold the bottom of the curtain up over the spreader bar. And what this does is it just reduces the height of the door. It means that the PPV fan can be moved much closer to the building and still create a seal around that smaller opening. And because it's closer to the building and it's going through a smaller opening, you get more effectiveness from the fan and you'll be able to clear the smoke faster. And that's it. So we've looked at different types of doors you can fit the curtain in, different ways you can fit the curtain. I hope it's been useful. Thank you for watching.